Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Andrew Missick. I'm running for Texas State Legislature to represent and serve the citizens of HD 18, which is Liberty, San Jacinto, East Montgomery, and Hardin counties. The election's coming up very soon, and this has been a very ugly campaign in a certain way. And there's been a lot of hits coming towards Ernest Bales, the incumbent. But I think what's going on is he's being held accountable for his record. And one of the biggest issues this election cycle, there's several big issues. Number one is the impeachment of Ken Paxton. Now, in this House district across Texas, Ken Paxton is very popular. He won the election to be Attorney General. And Ernest Bales voted to impeach Ken Paxton over frivolous claims. Secondly, we have the issue of Colony Ridge. Colony Ridge is a settlement, it's a sanctuary city created in Liberty County where illegal aliens, people who are intending to exploit our immigration system and have a uh, try to make a fraudulent asylum claim, these two brothers, John and Trey Harris, have been recruiting illegal aliens to come and settle in Liberty County, in this area called Colony Ridge, terrain is Houston, where the people live in squalor. It's a shanty town. There are reports of cartel activity, of sex trafficking, and we have pollution and destruction of the environment where a flood zone is created. So these are important issues. One thing that surprised me is Ernest Bales being disingenuous. So he's been taking hits, deservedly, for Colony Ridge because he helped craft legislation that enabled and empowered Colony Ridge to grow from a small development to expand to the size of Manhattan. And it's expected to grow. Ernest Bells has helped Colony Ridge grow to 75,000 people and he intends to grow it to a quarter million. Ernest Bales says he opposes, now he says he opposes Colony Ridge. Well, what has he done to oppose Colony Ridge? When he first became Texas State Legislator, he came to a Ministerial Alliance meeting where I was present, and he told us, it's like, I know you've heard stories about what's going on in Plum Grove, and I don't want you to worry about it anymore. In Austin, we have made it legal, and it's not going away. You're going to have to accept what's going on in Plum Grove because it's not going away. That's before we started calling it Colony Ridge, Tarantos, Houston, popularly. I'm sure that's what it's called from the inception. But we're just calling about the, the, what's going on in Plum Grove. So now, now Ernest Bells claims two things. He claims he opposes Colony Ridge, and he, is, he claims that he's spending $40 million plus for security. Some of his advocates say that, oh, there's no crime and, and uh, cartel activity over there. If that is true, why did the Texas State Legislature authorize tens of millions of dollars to provide security for Colony Ridge. And yet, and yet, the police officers and constables in Colony Ridge area say they haven't seen one red cent. Where's the money? That disturbed me. First, the governor has the authority to impose the rule of law on Colony Ridge, and he hasn't taken that action. Instead, he punted to the legislature, where they just had a dog and pony show and didn't do anything but throw money at the issue. And I felt like when I found, when I found that they're going to do that, I said, that money is never going to be seen. It's going to be misappropriated. It's not going to actually address the needs of this community. Sadly, that looks like that is the case. But at least uh, Ernest Bells is able to say, I spent so much money to combat crime in Colony Ridge. Actually, the citizens of Texas should not have to pay for problems created by Trey and John Harris and Colony Ridge Trey and Houston. They should have to pay for the problems they've created. They're the ones that should be held accountable. What I want to do in this program is present an audio recording of Ernest Bales admitting to his hostility towards Ken Paxson. This audio recording of Ernest Bales admitting to his involvement support for the impeachment of Ken Paxton and also his involvement in Colony Ridge uh, has been in possession of law enforcement agencies and uh, the news media for several weeks. But I feel like there's a public interest 
and this information being made accessible to the general public. Early voting starts Tuesday. I'm making this recording on Monday, and I believe that the public needs to understand and know about Ernest Bell's opposition to Kid Paxton and his involvement in the Colony Ridge fiasco before they cast a vote. So I'm making this audio recording available to the general public. And as I said, don't believe every single thing that Ernest Bell says. One of the problems with Colony Ridge is they're pumping tens of thousands of gallons of raw human sewage from Colony Ridge because it doesn't have a proper sewage infrastructure. They're dumping the water into our rivers, into our creeks, into our streams, into our lakes, and into the public drinking waters of Texas. Texans are having to, to drink feces and urine from Colony Ridge in their drinking water. In this recording, Ernest Bell says, no, no, that's not what's happening. What's going on is campers are taking a dump in the woods, and sometimes they're throwing their turds into ditches. And it's these campers out there, you see, they're just crapping all over the place. It's not coming from Colony Ridge. Yes, there's feces all over, but that's from campers. Give me a break. And I've been doing these debates and panel discussions with the candidates, me, Ernest Bales, Janice Holt, and Shanna Steele, who are running for Texas State Legislature. And uh, I'm making these recordings available because I think the public needs to see uh, all the candidates and listen to them and make an informed decision. And there are people who have been following the Colony Ridge story who say, well, Ernest Bales is saying various untruths. Now, the most important thing in this video, to me, that I think is important, is we see that Ernest Bales is friends, so how it comes across, with John and Trey Harris. He knows them very, very well. He knows Trey Harris on a first-name basis. He just calls him, he doesn't call him Mr. Harris or Mr. Trey Harris. He calls him Trey because they're tight. And he admits in this recording that he worked with Trey Harris to write the legislature, which granted special benefits and privileges and protections and empowerment to Colony Ridge. That's House Bill 4341. He says he placed restrictions on it. What restrictions did he place on it? Because it seems like they're doing whatever the heck they want in Colony Ridge with impunity. They don't have to worry about the code. They don't have to worry about regulations. They just do whatever they want. Exploiting illegal aliens, exploiting Hispanic American Texans, Tejanos, and ravishing our environment with impunity. And here's the issue. Ernest Bales has served four terms in office, and Colony Ridge has gone bad to worse, and either it's by design or incompetence. And if this is incompetence, he needs to be removed from office. If it's by design, he needs to be held criminally liable. And what I believe is that HB 4341 was written to grow Colony Ridge from a few thousand people to a quarter million people, and it's being very successful. This nightmare of Colony Ridge would not have happened without Ernest Bells and Trey Harris writing HB 431. And Ernest Bells, in this recording, admits that he wrote HB 431 with Trey Harris, that Trey Harris gave him this document and that he wrote it uh, with input from Trey Harris. And he says he's trying to control, uh, to, to, to rein Trey Harris in. But on the other hand, he mentions that he was afraid of Trey Harris, that Trey Harris would physically assault him if he was displeased with him in any way. That's what he says. Listen to it yourself. So I think this is very important for the public to be informed. We have a recording of Ernest Bales opposing Ken Paxton and defending his impeaching of Ken Paxton on these frivolous and absurd charges and accusation. One of the things he says is how there's uh, these left-wing activists who are working for Ken Paxton made some kind of frivolous lawsuit and there was a settlement. And uh, he was saying, well, he's trying to get the state of Texas to pay for that. Uh, but the thing is, the state of Texas spent Un, um, unknown amount of money on this ridiculous fiasco of an impeachment. So perhaps it would have been better, we would have saved more money 
if they paid these bozos off that brought this frivolous lawsuit against Ken Paxton instead of having this absurd and ridiculous impeachment, which was an embarrassment uh, and a mis misuse of funds. Ernest Bell trash talks these four men, Governor Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, Attorney General Ken Paxton, and conservative talk show host Michael Berry. Now, this audio recording is, is important for a few reasons. I want to warn the listener not to believe everything that Ernest Bales is saying. But what he does say is disturbing. So please watch this video and be informed. And I have a few statements in the conclusion. Elk. Hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you again. We had a long time ago at I the... Uh, I remember. At the ballpark, take off. Take off. Yeah. I saw Wesley last night. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. All right, there's a lot of BS going around. There's a lot of crap. You just don't even know what's real, what's Memorex. Okay. So I got concerns. And maybe you can help me. I read the whereas that we did yesterday up in the Texas GOP. They got a whole oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. deal, whereas, 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 whereas. Because I don't know what you're talking about, whereas. I'm like, Words are cheap. Action is strong. And we're... I'm seeing, I have patients out there that come in with horror stories of what's going on out there, the atrocities that are going on out there. I don't care if illegal aliens come over here because if I was in Mexico and I needed a better place for my family, I would do whatever it took to get them to a better place. I don't fault that. What gets me is the atrocities happening out there, all right? And the stuff I'm being told needs to be addressed. Well, you can ask the one, oh, it was um, <clears throat> old dump truck or something like that. First I've ever heard of that. Well, you know, they're, they're running dump trucks in there. He's paying on pennies on the dollar. Then the money that he's paying on is going back into land payments. So it's basically sharecropping to slave labor. Well, and it's funny. I actually brought up, so back in 17, I first got elected. Mm -hmm. I, I read yeah. that where you read the bullet points of how and it was it. interesting a point I asked which is goes directly to the statement there mm -hmm. so the governor I was like all right so he said well there's nothing nothing I can do on that that's federal I said so I run a business I can't hire anyone who's not here legally but I can sell them land is that what you're telling me so what it is I said so if I told you the note on something could I allow them to work off that debt? Because I asked the exact same question. He said, well, it's not that clear. So it's, fun, it's funny you say that, because I, I actually asked, I asked that same question. All right, now, number other thing is, is they're working this machine or with no certification? See, I don't and, see, is Trey even driving, doing? They're driving dump trucks with no CDL. So Trey isn't doing any construction, though, is he? I think that's all Donald Burke. No, not Don, um, there's, there's two Burks. It's not Donald. There's two Burks. Yeah. Brothers, I don't know which it is, but one of the Burks is the one doing all the construction. I don't think Trey's actually doing any construction, is he? Man, it, he has these ways of trying to keep his hands clean while he's dirty as crap. It's well, the way I look at it. And because actually, I think he's out of it completely. I got people that'll say that if they miss one payment in a week, uh, they get walked off their property. They don't even get to go back in and get their clothes. Then they have a group of guys that See, go in there. They can't do that for a, a U.S. citizen. But illegal aliens don't have any recourse. They're sitting there going, "If I go to the police, are they corrupt like they were where I came from? Are they? Am I able to report it to anybody? Who's bought off? Who's not? I don't even know that. I live here. So I don't who, know what local officials are actually on the take and which ones aren't." Because I know that I, I stopped yesterday. I went. And, um, I wrote to there about two hours yesterday. Because the lieutenant governor was here. Mm -hmm. You know, he never once called. Let me know. I mean, called. He just showed up. He just showed up, That's and he's quoting a lot of stuff. <laughs> and even Sheriff Raider, he's like, I got a call, and he says, what you, "Why aren't Why aren't there any cops out of here? Why aren't this?" He's like, "There are. I can show you the full documents of." Mm -hmm. He's well, I'm being told. He's like, the sheriffs are going out there. Right. Well, but the deal is, the folks that are writing it have never once asked. Mm -hmm. So I actually, I got the info today, 
And I'm going to call them to see them because I'd reach out and tell them to give me a call. And, I'd, mm-hmm. and, um, and I appreciate you coming in because oh, no, this helps us square it anything, away. Anytime I can. Because uh, it, it, it's, I had a sheriff's deputy that came in to me. And he's on Remain Anonymous. You can put ball wire on his toenails. I'm not going to get yeah. him up, right? But he did a traffic stop. Okay. on one of the dump trucks all right dude didn't have any cdl the dump truck was illegal to be on the road in the first place trey harris shows up and says you don't give my uh, boy a ticket because all he's trying to do is make a living so I, I, and this is from I have a, I have the guy's things. own mouth that was on the traffic stop well that's pretty darn incredible you know i mean no that is like i said i'm not heard of anything like Let's go to the sheriff's department. Let's talk to the people there. Let's let's find out what's on the ground. Let's get an interpreter and let's go talk to the people on the ground out there that's being done this way. Because the patients that I have that come in here, man, their stories will make you cry. And if you know what's going on out there and you're allowing it to happen, you're just as guilty as the people doing it. No, no, no. My Bible says he who does the least of these does it unto me. Oh yeah, no. I mean, if you let it happen, you're, that, that that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm shouting from the roost. At least to get somebody to go in there and investigate this stuff, because if he's paying them cash, right? That's tax evasion. If he's letting them pay them back immediately after he pays on their paycheck, and they go and pay for the land for that week, that's sharecropping at best, which was illegal in the 1800s slavery at worst because they're working for free because that land doesn't mean that much to him because if they're walked off that land he has somebody right behind him to come in and take over. He benefits from the work that they had already did in the land. Well that and he bulldozes over their house whatever if it's a pallet with a freaking tar paper wrapped around it he goes in there and bulldozes it under but before he bulldozes it under what I'm hearing from illegal aliens all right, is that he sends a team in there and takes anything of value, tools, uh, anything of I've value, any of that. and then he has them go and sell it. This is what's going on, whether you know it or not, this is what's going on. The sex houses out there is horrible. I got one lady that she delivers food out there from the food pantry, and she can tell you exactly where the sex house is. You got drug cartels going out there and assassinating people in broad daylight in the middle of the street in front of their neighbors and family members and nothing being done it isn't just as simple as an illegal colony out there the atrocities that are happening out there are horrible and they're underreported very so underreported rob willoughby i got a call from rob he got a call from mcgraw we're always over all DPS, and he was told to put together package and recommendation on what DPS, what additional resource DPS can send out there. So helped him with that. That's probably too. Well, all DPS is going to do is traffic stops. They can't answer calls like a sheriff's. Well, and department. even constable, and that's where like uh, Courtney, uh, Courtney Lee, <coughs> constable out there. I sat with Courtney. I like hopped in the car with him. We talked for about an hour yesterday mm-hmm. that kind of runs together but it was yesterday i know it was not too long ago mm-hmm. um it was interesting just kind of talking to court and kind of getting i said just talk to me i said just here listening mm-hmm. kind of like this in between you and i, I said just talk to me kind of like the guy who brought your stuff um and it's interesting to hear their take on it he says you he says i see the same stuff that's put out there but he says it doesn't he said, me as a law enforcement officer who is out here every day, he said, I'm not seeing that. Mm-hmm. And that's the hard disconnect because I get info from them. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I've not heard of this other stuff. And so here, let me just back up this a little bit. So when I did, so I got hit on because Trey, 1600 bucks. He was a constituent of mine. Mm-hmm. Very first uh, campaign. Uh, I'm not. I'm it, not getting no, on to you but, about that because you take campaign contributions where you can get them. But but this is also I'm interesting. But this is now. this kind of helps tie the full circle. Mm-hmm. So I put the only building restrictions that have ever been placed out there, and sat down with the governor's office, sat down with the lieutenant governor's office, sat down with the attorney general, everyone up back in 2017, mm-hmm. 
and we got those. That's the first time that they ever put the brick and mortar builders out there. Uh, Danny Singarelli, First American Homes. Mm-hmm. I know uh, Morris Builders. Morris did some out there. There was a maybe Lenar was the other one. And so we got that done. And then there was something else. He asked me. He asked if I would do. It. I was like, I, I can't touch that. And there was from Trey, and it, Trey got pretty pissed. And so he called me when he was in Austin. He said, you're an Austin, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, well, I'm going to give you a heads up. we got a tenant to. I said, what do you mean? He said, that, I didn't even, don't even remember the full details of what the issue was. So his first ever contribution to Governor Abbott was $50,000. And that got a sit-down lunch in the governor's mansion with the governor, Louise Sines, his chief of staff. Oh, okay. And it was a, oh, opportunity zones. Mm-hmm. So that is a federally declared opportunity zone that the governor signed off on so he can get additional federal monies. Oh, and also HUD came in and investigated him a couple weeks ago and under Fair Housing Acts. Because if you only sell to illegal aliens and you don't open it up to other people, you're violating Fair Housing Act because you can't discriminate. I've never heard of it. I can name you about four or five crimes going on out there that he could be arrested for. Oh, I don't doubt it at all. And, and what drives me crazy is everybody's pretending like it isn't happening. It's trying to turn a blind eye to it because it's been going on since 2015 and before. Well, yeah, like the city it actually just started DNX, yesterday. The city DNX that stuff. And, and so when I did carry the one bill that Trey quasi benefited from, I put restrictions and I put the points that I did on that. I only did one of the board you did the he has to abide by the uh, text dot for building the roads and stuff which he doesn't do because he didn't put any reinforcements in the concrete when he poured roller compacted expansion joints sucks it's it's not a good rebar in the concrete and the city side I mean not the city but the the county you will not find any rebar I know he doesn't put any it's called roller compacted concrete yeah Roll, roll con initially did it Mm-hmm. And Trey, well, actually, I say Trey. Trey, I don't know if he owns it, but there's a Hispanic fella he introduced me to once. I saw him at the uh, at Deary Day. And he said, hey, I want to introduce you to the guy. And he was a Hispanic fella who was doing, the, who, I think he might have helped finance the concrete plan or however that works. Mm-hmm. But he was the one doing the concrete. Um, I mean, the biggest thing is, We've got to have the governor's help on this. You know, I don't get it. There, there's too much money being thrown. The dude goes hunting with him. Well, like I said, we all know this. Uh, That's the thing. Is it is no secret what's going on. So I was with Babin last night. Everybody and, uh, and their dog knows what's going on, and it's all going to come crashing down. And people better start whistleblowing because what's going to happen is everybody's going to go down with the ship. We didn't set a good precedence for whistleblowers on the Paxton stuff. Um. And that's it. Hell, I've taken, I've got cussed at, yelled at more than that. I said, you know what, I'll take them. No, I, I grabbed at you about that one. Oh, it, well, mean, you know the only reason we ever, that ever came about? Mm-hmm. Ever. $3.3 million, which was his personal settlement that he agreed to pay. And he has still admits, he, he took full, full credit for that. He came one week before we closed the budget and ordered $3.3 million line item added to pay for his personal settlement. Nobody's talking about that. Mm-hmm. But that had been mentioned that in that the is court. A, that's not what I happened. watched the court proceedings. I watched the whole impeachment trial. That well, wasn't one of the charges because he had already accepted and taken it. That's why it was never brought up. Hmm. But that's well, the I'm only reason it ever, ever got brought up. It, it and I was under a gag order that there. I couldn't even say a word. Right. The lieutenant governor took $3 million right before he presided over the case. And I know for a fact, the day the proceedings finished, he was making personal calls to the jurors as the judge telling them how to vote. That, that's you why I say that we got to clean up all this freaking corruption, man. It, it, it's running amok. Uh, we don't even know who we can go to in this own county because everybody's bought off. We don't know. See, and I don't, I mean, Raider, I mean, I've always had, I've had a good line of communication with Raider and with, with Judge and everybody else, but it's, 
So, and I even asked well, Judge Knight like, got caught taking money on Channel 11 News in front of Wayne Del Ficino and nothing happened to him. Well, that was back in 2000, what was it, 2013, 2014? That was before my time. I, I know, but still, if we've been working it and it was, when did you come into office? 17. 17. Okay, from 17 to now, what has happened? We were able to help um, at the border a lot, but it, okay, takes more, like the, it takes more than just at the border. What, we got it. We got because it. if they got a place to come to, they're not going to stop. And when they advertise down there in Central America and South America and say it's utopia, you need to come, you'll get your own quarter acre. And he's got lot, telemarketers and TV down there. And you can't put a septic system on a quarter acre. According but, to state law. And here's the other thing. It actually has, and I've, I've sat with TCQ at my desk mm -hmm. three times. Um, because I said too too early on, and then even uh, even this last session, I had TCQ to get back in my office, and I said I want every permit go to the plan and make sure they actually exceed all TCQ specs. We actually have there's I say we there is uh, public works mm -hmm. in Plum Grove actually exceed all capacity in Cleveland as far as quality and their uh, what they're able to control and do, and then the kids said, well there there's it well, we have to run off. Well, there's the infrastructure suffering so bad. Our sewer system's on uh, freaking life support. Well, because they're on a mud quad vest is actually the one that, that does it. They're actually part of the, like the ozone run. Okay, the our, I don't know if you know it, but our city's fixing to go bankrupt. We got a 1.5 million dollar bond coming due in November, and we ain't got the money for it. We're paying our firefighters on grant money right now. And we're having to lower their and that's illegal you can't do that that's what's happening go go check it out i can't uh, make this stuff up and they're sitting there and our firefighters are calmed down to half part-time all right they don't even know if they're gonna get a paycheck next week but we're turning the blind out all this because our infrastructure is getting torn apart uh, look at the roads drop down washington avenue see if you don't lose a front end just about then why are we spending all the money on the aesthetic stuff? Like I've noticed the nice new cobblestone right there as I turn. Do you know why they did that? that? Because she got a three point five million dollar grant to make it. Reification grant. And now, why they didn't put that. why they didn't put a sidewalk down to the high school to where the kids don't have to walk in the middle of the street and get ran over? I have no idea. But instead of putting a sidewalk down the side so of the street pull that makes a whole that. lot more sense. They sit there and put it around downtown Cleveland where nobody walks. You know, there, there's so much stuff, dude. And they the same is, way. I mean, so bad. So they shut down, um, I can't think of the street right next to the tire shop in Dayton. They shut the, that down and now it's a food truck park. Yeah. And that's another thing in this town. You'll see these drink places all over the place. Yeah, I saw one there for the old church's chicken. I got friends that have coffee shops and stuff like that. They're going bankrupt because they're having to do all the state fees. They're having to get the inspections done. They're having to placate to taxes and all this stuff. These people put up a shop on the corner with a tent and nothing happens to them. And then I had one lady that owned the property that this guy put up a tent at. He got up in her face and started yelling at her for telling them. You know, West Hinch? West, huh? West Hinch and I actually ran into each other our very first and I, I Get, get along very good. I, mean, I love your mother, by the way. Oh, she's she's a sweetheart, man. Uh, Every time we'd go in, it'd be like, oh, how are the kids? You know, yeah, that's no, she's she a sweetheart. Um, so I talked to Wes last night. I was in Liberty last night. Mm -hmm. Well, hell, that's, I started in New Canaan, then Shepherd, and then I was in Liberty, then I was in Magnolia last night. Got mm -hmm. in the fairgrounds at 9.30, and then I was before 8, I was in London. So I'll be out there Saturday. <sighs> so <laughs> this was... Um, I don't know where I was going. Um, oh, West Hinch. Mm -hmm. So I saw West Hinch at David Leonard's last night. And he kind of laughed. He said, yeah, I think I've already told you. Glad you got the job and not me. It's actually been a blessing. He says, and I called my office after that. I said, pull this up. I want you to go back and find this. So as county attorney, Wesley actually went to the Capitol and testified to expand county's ability to regulate outside of an ETJ or, or municipality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and got absolutely beat up. He said, I can show you just the pages of stuff I got wow. where big government, this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. He says, the same thing that we tried to get passed, which could have stopped this, he said, the same folks that are yelling the loudest about why aren't we doing anything, he said, I can show you the exact same response to where they're the ones that beat me up about how dare I take their rights. And that that's what's pissing business. me off so bad. Is you'll see, okay, you'll see Abbott sitting there going, we're trying to close the border. They're shipping illegals off to God knows where, right? He doesn't want to shut the borders down. Because if I was governor, I'd shut it down in two days. I'd, stay, I'd declare state it sovereignty. Makes, it makes I would rest. kick ICE out and we'd close our border down. All right. When ICE is sitting there cutting the barbed wire, I'd have done already had them arrested for destruction of state property. Period. They don't have the federal authority to sit there and destroy state property. Why isn't stuff like that going on? Why? Because it's too lucrative it to keep it open. the controversy. That, that, that's it. And that's how he gets reelected all the time is because he's pro-border when all the time he could care less about it because Trey Harris gives him $1.5 million and he goes hunting with him. And that's that's horrible. Wait, what, how do you think I feel in this situation? I was like, I'm on your cause to yell at. But what I'm saying is we got to... We, we got to figure out something because there's, this is unsustainable. There's two mechanisms that I think we have. Too quick, and it's unsustainable. And there is atrocities out there. And when I talk to the constable's office, they go, "Yeah, there's drug cartel out there." And I said, "Yeah, why aren't you doing anything?" Well, we can't determine who it is, and so we got to wait. And da -da 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 -da. I said, "I can tell you, it is. Go off at 10:08, and you drive to where it tees off." There's a drug cartel right there. It's kind of interesting. You drive back and tuck back. You got a huge rock two-story with all with all the tinted glass windows. It's like <laughs> this doesn't fit in. Why? Why did that's a bait house? That ain't the drug cartel. The drug cartel is the little house with little chickens in the front running around. Those are the drug cartels. You know who they are. Everybody knows who they are. Why isn't something being done about it? Because these guys are showing up in front of businesses around here, driving up with six vehicles. Three guys stay outside, keeping a watch while 13 guys go into a business. Now, why isn't something being done about that? Nothing. Because everybody's too afraid. There's nobody with a spine that will actually stand up and do something. So, so here's a question. And that happened like to a friend of mine's business, by the way. Like, even like... The Rangers, I mean, is this information that we can have a plausible conversation with? Like somebody like Brandon Best, you know Brandon and all? Mm -hmm. Do you like Brandon? Get along with him fine? Yeah, I get along with all. I mean, so I Brandon, Ryan, all Ryan, all Ryan is not here, but I mean, he lives right there <coughs> next to the airport. Mm -hmm. If you have information that can validate, mm -hmm. let's sit down and talk with him. I don't talk unless I have validation for it. Well, no, and that's where I mean, or even if, okay, here's the problem. Here's the problem. So we talk about the whistleblower, and then even, I get, to, I get to work with those guys quite a bit. I have stuff that's brought to my attention, and once, like, I've, I've had, you name it, I've had it brought to my attention, and sometimes it, it's pretty damning. Mm-hmm. And I said, all right, you made me aware. What do you, well, ultimately, what are you trying to accomplish me being aware of this? And I got to ask that too. I mean, like mm -hmm. some, I mean, this, some, not actually nothing, but if anything ever happens to me, I want somebody to be aware. I was like, right. That's what I tell fair, people. Fair I've been threatened. Oh, well, I have to. Full okay. disclosure, I've been threatened. My family's been threatened. Everything. I'm on a limb here. We're begging somebody to do something. Would you? Is there a place that we can sit down? Quite have lunch with somebody like Brandon. Brandon would be a good one to have it with. Yeah, I mean, we can go to Agave, we can go anywhere. I mean, let's do that. I mean, like the back room there. And I know there's other people, but I mean, he's. I've always had a really good relationship with Brandon. I've had times where I brought things to his attention that a lot of folks don't want to touch. Mm -hmm. And he's proven to be pretty effective on. He's a good conduit who can help get things going in the right direction. And that's like, I've got a good relationship with Zach and the others, but I mean, that's. I think he's probably a better one to have it with. I think the problem with Zach is he, having a DA and a constable that close, 
shows a lot of possible problems in that. Um, and then again, I've known Jocelyn my whole life too. And I get on the phone with Jocelyn. I know Zach Hartman. Is, he's a friend of mine. Jocelyn is a friend of mine. These are friends of mine. But the appearance isn't good. Oh, I know. No, I, I, I hear you. I'm, I'm not saying that. either one of them is bad. I'm just saying the appearance isn't good. Do you think? I think so, best would be the best one. Do you, do you agree with that? Or? I think so. Because, I mean, like I said, he's, he's not, he is. Because I don't have any other axe to grind other than what bugs me the most is when people don't have anything else and they're treated a certain way and they're worse off after knowing this place than what they were coming across the border in the first place. Yeah. I have a problem with that. When families lose their father because he might have overstepped bounds with the drug cartel and they shoot him in the middle of the street, I got a problem. Yeah, with yeah that. and you should. Somebody that doesn't yeah. is somebody I worry about. That's right. But if we know it's happening and we allow it to happen, we're just as guilty as the people pulling the trigger. We're just as guilty as the people out there taking advantage of these people. And that's where my heart is. I'm, well, not let's, let's to, take a look. I'm not out to hang anybody. I'm not out to skewer somebody across the coals. That isn't what I'm about. I'm about where is the justice in all of this? Where is the compassion in all of this? Yeah. Uh, and whenever I can name you off so many crimes that's being perpetrated out there and nothing being done, whether we like it indifferent or whatever, if nothing's being done, Nothing's being done. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't make it right. Let's take a look at uh, next next week. You and I and Brandon sitting down because I, think I, got, I got some questions for, oh, go for law enforcement because yeah, I know sheriff's deputies are going out there trying to do their best for what they got to work with. All right, it isn't thin by no means, but we could do more. Well, and there's a like, little San City County. And you know how many of the, officers are on A lot that? of the sheriff's deputies are nervous out there because of the drug cartel interact. Whether they want to admit it or not, they're nervous out there. You should, yeah. I, I would be too. I don't even want to drive out there. I mean, I'll, I'll take somebody out there if they want to go interview somebody, but it, it's not a safe spot to be in. You honk at the wrong person, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, I, I catch myself uh, waiting a little bit more. Um, and and the, traffic loads, somebody. the traffic loads are so horrible. I swear some of the people on 1010 just close their eyes and shoots across there and hopes they don't 10 was no never bad. designed for that much traffic. Oh, that guy's leaving my website. Hell, I have this bad the camera system. I got one that catches every person. The other three only triggered here at certain hours, but it's nice to know who's in yeah. it now. Um, I work with text out a ton on that and the city has not helped like hell, they're not even showing up to city council in the last two meetings to pass the budget you're talking about plum grove oh, still yeah well that's a different you, you look at our schools uh, i don't know if you're aware of this but five students overdosed on peanut barbara or on fentanyl last week i don't know you heard about that back in february we had 12 students that overdosed on or got sick from you know, uh, fentanyl all right the school whenever it happens they don't even tell the other parents so the other parents can educate the other kids about it. not doing it near did a lot of the people in the area all right but our schools are overcrowded i don't know if you saw the video i, know, of I have the, and i know people standing like this yeah, i met with you know they have 1100 do you, do you, do you register that first week? Yeah. Out of the start. Do you know what their answer to the overcrowding is? Have you heard it? What is it? They made it one direction. Down that hallway. All right. You can't go back against the direction. So you got to go down that hallway, outside the school, walk around the school, come back in the other end, and walk down to your classroom. Now, if you're just one door down from your other classroom, you still got to go walk all the way around and go back into your classroom. Does that make any sense? No. But yet we're spending so much money for them to have six schools out there, state-of-the-art schools, while our schools are overloaded and we're learning out of FEMA trailers. 
I mean, is that it, what we're supposed to be asking our Cleveland ISD to be doing? Well, and I've even brought it up. Somebody asked, like, on the... But we'll build a big old separate. administrative building when our kids are learning how to payment traders. Can't the administrators work out of payment that's, traders? That's a pretty big building. That's what I was saying. That. They could have got a waiver, too, and readdressed that bond to extend the high school. But they chose not to. And, um... Commissioner Moran. I spoke like 20 times. Al, I know he spoke a lot on that. Uh, you know what his answer was out there? Hmm. Well, y'all just need to give superintendents more creative. I was like, I'm all ears. I said, hell, if you got an idea that I hadn't thought about, just, I'm listening. He said, well, they all need to find a way to teach people out, out in fields, or maybe in churches, or, or even in trailer houses. You can probably buy and repossess trailer houses. I said, Commissioner, I'm not that smart. Well, no, no, I, before I said that, I said, just, so out in the fields, help me understand that. And he talked a little bit. And I said, I'm going to go ahead and cut you off. I said, I'm not an attorney and I'm not that damn smart. I don't, I'll stay away with that. But I said, when you have a low socioeconomic minority protected population that you're teaching in a tent with cold cyclones, and you have a more fluent Caucasian population, brick and mortar building with a hot plate lunch. That sounds like one hell of a discrimination suit at the federal level right there. He said, well, they're getting harder to win, so it might be worth doing. And my wife was in well, the vehicle. My wife was in the vehicle with that, That's not the answer. I thought she got shit. But, see, we're not getting any help, it seems like, from anywhere else to deal with the overloaded schools. Now, I did pass, and I got as far as the uh, hypersonic growth. I did actually change the metric to get a higher weighting here. Mm -hmm. I did also change on the standardized test to where ESL or ELL, it used to be ESL, now it's English Language Learner, to where they're actually exempted for the first couple of years on that metric, bringing down the whole school system. You can't have somebody who's never had formal education mm -hmm. to come in and give them a star test and then screw and give the whole campus a failed fail rating. So I did a couple of those things. And we have actually explored and are looking at again, how can they split? And I had somebody ask, and I said, well, I said, I'll put this in a better context. Conroe ISD also includes the Woodlands. Hmm. Here, hold one second. 56. Make sure that didn't call. Hmm. Uh, one second. Sorry, that guy was supposed to be on the call with me, just checking to make sure. I was like, I thought he was making sure I was still going to get on. I was like, I know it didn't start yet. <laughs> All right. Sorry. No, I, I, I try not to. But, um, but no, it, like, I'm being able to, mm -hmm. they're different worlds, different everything, and for a whole lot of reasons, areas should be split. But when you have Conroe ISD that can't, the Woodlands can't even break from Conroe ISD. And there's a ton of money right there. For every reason, those ought to be different worlds too. Mm -hmm. And they can't even get split. All of the uh, Democratic attorneys, civil rights folks who want to get on board mm -hmm. and keep this this suit from splitting, mm -hmm. that's not, that, that, that kills us. They should, they should be, they're, they're totally different worlds. Right, they should right. be, and really that area, it should go 99 out. It should not come 10-10 this way. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the roads aren't there, the infrastructure's not there. It's not supposed to be even remote. It doesn't help the fact that we have such a disconjointed municipality as Plum Grove. If, 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 if Plum Grove had their ducks in a row, did they have a police department in Plum Grove? They do, they did, they had to split. That's okay, certainly that, that's things. part that's part of but they can only do what's in the city limits. Right. But what I say is, are they a true city? They are true Because by definition you have to have a police department. They are they, they and I actually have the original articles of corporation. It's either in the 40s or the 60s, one of the two. And the only reason they became a municipality is to be able to get federal funding to address flooding. 
because it came up well they're flooding because of all of that what's going to happen when these 200,000 people out here get flooded and they get displaced because a harvey comes in or a bad storm comes in because they're all building on flood land out there well and that's the all wetlands up there the problem with it also is not that area used to retain water and it would slow the release because they have the ditches and they have the hydrology and stuff and the county signed off on it not, that's not, the problem. I'm not yelling at the county, okay. but the county, the the county board. MMD board, guess who they work for? The whole board. Guess who they work for? Now, the MMD is municipal management different. That's that's right. a different board. But guess than, who they work for? Guess who everybody on that board works for? Oh, the MMD works for Trey. The whole board. Why? Well, because that that's well, when I did that initial, his. And uh, how can a member of the board? be working in that and they don't even live there yeah i mean how does it well work? that's why i check like it's that way across the state everyone across the state every developer they do their own interim directors and traded that he, he gave me five names that's what pissed him off i kicked him out of my office and he's i don't know if you've had a whole lot of interactions with him hmm. he uh his uncle was uh roy harris hmm. that way box of the world Trey fought, Trey fought on the U.S. Olympic team. He fought all over the world. And when you piss him off quite enough that he really starts forming, I was like, I better de-escalate this before I get my ass hit right here. Mm -hmm. This is not going to end well for me, probably. I'll take like, I'm not going back now, but in his <laughs> and I was like, um, so I kicked him out of my office and told him, I said, point blank, I was like, I've heard your concerns. I've told you what I'm going to do, and I says, I'm going to bring it before the committee. I'll text your lawyers when I'm going to bring it up. And I said, I've already talked to the chairman of uh, the committee. And after I lay it out, I'll look back. And you can either nod or you can shake your head no. If you shake your head no, we'll kill it right here at Graveyard Den. There's not a chance of saving it. Because I never told him about the restrictions I put in place. He found out about those same time everybody found out about them. Because he pissed me off. They brought language. And then I told him what I would not do. And then he brought other language. And I said, no, that's still not it. So then I took all three sets of language and I got enough sense to put them in a word processor and you can do an overlay. Mm -hmm. And you can see that there was new language added every time that we had never discussed. That didn't go over well with me. But like if I, you and I look and we discuss, we talk about something, I say, you know what? Strike line 113, strike 115, we can add this. That's all we're going to do to it. Mm -hmm. But you start adding other shit that we never discuss. No. No. I mean, so that's. But he actually had all five of his were employees. Not a single one lived in Liberty County then. Mm -hmm. And so I changed it to where Commissioner's Court did too, and the school district did too. And guess who they all put on there? They put the exact same ones. Mm -hmm. all, I can, all I can do is give them the tools to do it the right way. And that's what pisses me off. And even like on the restrictions, we put the restrictions so that it forced the hand so that they got builders. And I, Courtney and my wife, I had a we road out there. We were kind of looking one day too. And she said, I thought this is one where it's actually restricted. I was like, it is, but who is in charge of enforcing that? It's the mud has to enforce it. The county can't enforce it because it's out of their ETJ. And the other, so what make that's so we as a state have to put mechanisms me. to be able to enforce it. Well, that's another thing that's killing me is everybody's pointing fingers at everybody else and nobody wants to take responsibility for anything. Well, I think what we have to do, we have to be able to, we have to give the tools to the county to be able to enforce it. And I've talked to Jay and I've talked to others like, hell, we don't want it. Nobody wants it. So, I mean, that's the, even with the best laws, I mean, like, it's no different than, than any regulation right here. Mm -hmm. So there can be reason why they put regulation on being a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. But if there's nobody going to enforce it, what does it really matter? So I don't know how best we do enforce that. I mean, really, the state level with, with DPS, and like I said, DPS is limited on what they can do, too. They can actually, the governor can give a directive and expand their power so that they can actually help. Um, well, we need something because the system's breaking. And it isn't even just from the side of American versus illegal. It's inside fixing to erupt. 
Yeah. It, it's a it's a powder keg fixing to blow up in there. And I'm not talking about from our side. I'm talking about from the illegal alien side of it. Well, it's the going to blow yeah. up. I've actually asked. When you God suppress God. people so much, eventually. It, or hell, a health inspector. I mean, somebody was talking to me about they were trying to explain to somebody why you can't have dirt floors on a eating area. That's like, that's a, that's a powder keg there too. I mean, you've got restaurants or businesses like yours right here. They're going to come regulate the heck out of you. I got houses I'm building in Shepherd. I got a third party inspector. She can quote federal statute like it's nobody's business she came in and literally every time on the exterior plate that there's a splice on a 60 foot span she said she's like see when they put dry pins right there and they put splice on top and they put a board on top of that said, that does not follow 2018 code you have to actually drive and I need an 8 inch concrete anchor bolt within 12 inches of both sides of that splice I'm, I'm who knows <laughs> I mean, that's true that's like so, so I'm I'm having to spend money through the nose there. Mm. You're having to spend money through the nose here, and then you have that. It's hard to like it. It is. And uh, I don't like it because when you see people with pallet houses with tar paper wrapped around it, your heart goes out to them. It does. You know, I mean, that they're trying we had to. One lady that had a uh, she got some land out there and she had a mobile home put on it all right she hadn't even been able to move in yet and her weekly payment came up she was she didn't pay it on that day they knocked her off and took her mobile home we've got state and federal statutes which will not allow that at all. like if you have a tenant but you can't but, even cut whenever it's illegal aliens they feel like they, there's nobody to go to that's what and I don't know if that's going on whether if you want to acknowledge it or not it is going on because the people who they're doing it to don't feel like they have any other recourse but to tuck their tail and walk off the property see that's why they won't sell it to you you can't go out there and buy a piece of property out there because number one you're not illegal because you have certain rights that is not afforded to the illegal alien according to the way the illegal alien feels and how he's being taught all right because whenever he gets ran off who does he go to they come from a country that feels like the cops are totally corrupt and they won't help them out so who do you report it plus they don't want to be deported by raising a state well and I'm so basically how you get the word how you get told to step out. off and they just tuck their tail and walk off while they watch their place be bulldozed down after being ransacked by these other guys as so, well. so do you address that in the churches? How do you get the message out? I don't know. That's what we're trying to do is get the message out to show what's going on in there. So like the Taylor's organization, they had something I came came to. <coughs> um, a church comes to mind. I mean, I'm not saying it's the best option, but I mean, that's... See, I don't care if someone makes a profit. You know, uh, and Trey Harris, God bless him, he, he's a businessman, all right? I don't care that he's making a profit, but don't do it on the backs of the other right people. Way. Don't do it illegally. Get gainful money, not blood money. And if you're housing illegal aliens, aren't you aiding and abetting illegal activity at that point? If you know who you're selling to as illegal aliens, isn't that aiding and abetting illegal activity? If you know who the drug cartels are and you still sell them land and you sell them property and it's not selling it, it's 99 year leases. I don't know if you know that, but they're not even selling them the land. It's 99 year leases at loan shark prices. I actually had to pay their minimal payment. The interest rate goes on top of their principal and they never get ahead of it. Their, their payment keeps going up for eventually they get caught out of their house and home. So yeah, that's going on. What we need is, because I've had, um, Oh, I've had well, like six or eight different attorneys look at it and have not been able to find anything. But if we can get the paperwork that somebody's actually using and signing, because I've had like Patrick, so well, we're going to close I'm glad that you said something because I got a family that I'm going to use to get a piece of property out there and we're going to tape record and everything, all of it at one time. 
So yeah, that would we, be helpful. We got that. We're, we're I can get I can get that to the right, right people to sit down, but it's a kicker that uh. So I had when I carried that mud, um, I had four other attorney. I say attorneys, but they're they're um, law firms who specialize in developments. I sat down with nothing. I've seen one wanted their name anywhere on it. And I said, listen, you can help me find a way to get this done the right way, or it's going to come back and it's going to screw every one of you guys that are doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. So they helped me figure out how to put the restrictions and put some other stuff on there because that's not my wheelhouse. I don't mind telling you, but what I, about Trey Harris that makes him so powerful? Uh, well, I'll tell you personally, he's 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 retired. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, he ain't doing nothing. Anymore. So who took the wheelhouse from his brother? He had some other problems. Is that William Harris? No, Tr Trey's William. Okay. okay. His brother's name is. Oh, okay. He had, uh, and I don't know how best to say it, and I don't know all the details, but I know he did. He was enrolled in a program. Oh, yeah, a drug rehab. And it was not successful. There was a pretty bad relapse, and I called him once. Whenever his mom, I mean, just hadn't talked to him forever. I was like, thought at least touch base and just mm -hmm. know he plays folks. He had a granddaughter with spina bifida, mm -hmm. and then mom's sick, and then somebody else. And I asked somebody about him. He said, "Well, you ought to just check on him. He's not in a good place. Just just call and check on him. He's completely out of it." And so I just called him, and he was. I guarantee he does not remember talking to me. Wow. He was heavily under the influence of something. And this was one fifteen during the day. No, it wasn't that. No. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like at 10 o'clock at night. So then I did ask somebody else. I said, hey, I did check on him. He's not good. And they said, well, he is officially retired. He is out of the equation. And then I would asked kind of what. And they said, what well, combination of everything and then interest and stuff. And what I was told is they are wrapping up the stuff that they already have in the works and it is being shut down as far as any further development which helps at least um parkington isd and splendora isd it's not going to have cleveland like we need to I, like i said really i think the only way to fix it is a figure out the financing loophole because that's a that's a big right. issue figure out how and who we can do on the restriction side and that's people yell both ways i've been told i like a maria acevedo she's yelled and cussed at me and i've told i said maria i'll sit down talking anytime she said well i need you to force those people to tie in the system i said i can't do that i said that's not within the realm of, of what i can do or even mm -hmm. i said i said if i build a barn it's not a possibility next to a highway and there's city water and sewer that goes across front of my 150 acre place or whatever. Mm -hmm. That law would force me to have to build a line all the way up to hook on to that because it's available. That's not what, you, you, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. He says, well, there's fecal matter in the ditches. I was like, I'm gonna tell you exactly why there's fecal matter in the, matter in the ditches. Because when people are out there on the weekends, and they're camping in a tent or they're working or whatever, they're shitting in a bucket and then poured it in the ditch. It's not a runoff. It's not the sewer treatment plant that's running over. Because so I heard that TCQ. Where are they there. getting sewer and treatment from? They're all on sites they're all on site facilities. So they got pipes going down there through every Yeah, through all of them. Every one of them. The whole thing. They they ex they exceed people say well they're colonials. I was like, there's not a single thing that even makes it come close to a colonial. That act of business out takes colonial or, or zero access to services, no roads, no services. So they have their full fresh water. The TCEQ has checked many times, and I've had them check it. It exceeds what the state parameters are. They've got sewer, they've got roads, and then again, when they say roads, well, they are sheet roads. Well, the problem is with the fact that they have their own batch plants doing concrete there just the trucks that are hauling the sand and stuff to the concrete batch plant let alone the loaded concrete trucks 
they were never designed for that. And I've also asked why isn't the road fixed there on the Plum Grove Road? Best, best answer I've ever given. And all I do is shake my head. Because I hear a bunch of excuses for that. Um, the reason that I was told point blank is that by having that road, that culvert not fixed, it limits Harris County's ability to develop and put businesses on the other side to draw and benefit from those tax dollars. So by having that road, they can keep all the commercial businesses on the Liberty County side and we can benefit by the tax dollars. And I just kind of caught I my head see how that works. Well, wow, that's because it, it, that's BS. That's, that's exact. But this was before they put in 99 and stuff. But yeah. like I said, when they told me, I did the same thing. Cocked my head and it's like. That, it just doesn't make any sense. That sounds like shit to my 13 year old would but tell me, oh my, he did something dumb. When, when we've had some, like in May of, what was it, 2011 or something like that, we had a big flood. Mm -hmm. Right. In situations like that, where are they going to go? I don't know. Because uh, that's a major concern for everybody around here is where are they going to go when they get displaced by a flood? And because that, that place ain't got a big run off. I don't care what engineers say or whatever. They're in wetlands. They're in a flood area. It got 14 feet over the house, some of the houses in there. Oh, I've got, I drove down there. I called, uh, that was either Blast or Glendenny. I called when I was going down there. I was like, if I don't call you in, in an hour and a half, you come looking for me. Because I drove to the fire station because our mayor down there got pissed off, hollering and yelling. I said, Lynn, I've taken every phone call you've ever had, and I've done my bust my ass to help you. That's one thing that made me mad about this city. We sit there and build a new fire station, and ain't got the equipment or the personnel to put in it. Down by Grand Oaks. Yeah, that I thing don't really is totally know. blank. It's totally empty. And then we're setting everything on a railroad yard. That railroad yard really irritates me. What railroad? What are we talking about? Well, the 3,000 acre railroad yard out there on 105. What do you mean setting everything on it? Well, they're sitting there. EDC is just, that's your little so rainbow were, crowd here. Well, they were on the other side, and that thing has fell completely flat because that's been there for eight or ten years. Now, this is a new one that they're bringing in. I know BNSF. B, mm -hmm. EDC has nothing to do with that. They don't shift to that. Well, that's who that's who's taking the credit for it. Well, they don't have anything to do with it. Well, I, I because I asked them if they were going to allow local uh, that they had to pull from the local resources for jobs and stuff like Cleveland for jobs. EDC director looked at me and said, "No." I said, "Why not?" He goes, "Well, Robert, you upset with me, but I can tell you that has nothing to do with City of Cleveland. They don't have the job set for that." You're telling me you can't train the people of Cleveland to work out there? Well, and do we have the hazmat facility to handle the worst case scenario out there? Do you know who the largest taxpayer is in Dayton? Mm -hmm. Was that rail yard that Showlander put in? I didn't realize how much the cash cow is as far as taxes, mm -hmm. but that was the largest taxpayer in Dayton ISD. Mm -hmm. And this rail yard here is bigger than that because I've actually been working there. That's a 22 billion dollar project because I've been Cause I thought being SF was infrastructure and they don't pay state taxes on, or city taxes on property BNSF I can tell you there's one entity in the United States that is stronger than a US president and that is the railroad yep I agree didn't know that till I got elected and had to deal Who with it 23 percent of the railroad now we'll get into Vanguard LLC and BlackRock LLC I'm not going after conspiracy theories I'm going after what are they bringing to our city and are we bringing jobs to the city no all right because he said well see i don't know that we're spending any resource i don't know i think that's 100 percent private resources you may yeah. i may be wrong but i'm pretty certain that's all private resources yeah. edc right. has the industrial park right across right and Which that made no sense it's nowhere. not done anything because it did not have rail or anything like yeah. that and then so they, they, they want work. too much money for it you know, the only place that's using it is Colony Ridge out here to hold its uh, construction materials. I didn't know that. Yeah. But everything that the EDC, what has the EDC done for Cleveland in the last 40 years? See, I know I've How sat. How do they justify their funding? I've sat in on a, two of those because they've asked me, because they, they asked 
I was asked to submit a letter of support for two things. And I said, I'll set up a meeting, I'll listen, and on neither of them I was like. Did, did you support. hear what happened out at this fire station? All right, I know I keep going back to it, but they did the ribbon cutting before the fire station was even functional because certain people wanted their name on the plaque in front of the building. Oh, before the city. Yeah. I was there at the groundbreaking. I, I it, it, drive, that's, it didn't even have an elevator at that time. Are you aware of that? It wasn't even functional. No. They didn't even have the manpower to man it. They and they're sitting there doing a ribbon cut. In my opinion, a ribbon cut, cut is, they should be able to handle a fire a second after that ribbon was cut. I was at the ribbon cutting at the Huntsville <laughs> one, and they brought everybody in, showed everybody the trucks, and they did the, typically at a fire station ribbon cutting, they do a ceremonial, they push a truck in by hand. Yeah. I mean, that's just, I've been to them. You didn't see that out there? It's always one Did you see them push no, it? No, I wasn't there at that one. So, I mean, it, I think it that was, was during session. When was that? That was uh, last, spring. yeah, it was last May, I believe, right before the election. It was like two weeks before the mayoral election and the city council election. And I was running for mayor at the time. And I didn't go to it because I opposed it because if it isn't ready to go, don't ribbon cut. And exactly. definitely you do the ribbon cut after it's already been working a little bit and you got all the kinks up. You got to make sure it's working. You don't do that on the day. They don't do that on the first day. You kind of do that. But Boyette and then wanted their name on the plaque. So they can go, oh, look, we did it. Right. You know, yeah, it's crazy. We only got four fire trucks at work right now. And they're all at the one. They're do next you, to. Hey, did the school buy um, Campbell Drain Mix offices? Yep, but they pulled down. Okay, well, I saw the barricade because I asked because somebody. Because they had their administrative office in there. All right. And that building was not ran down when they went in there. You talking about school or? The school. I don't know that. That's where their administrative buildings were before they got the the deal for this one. The bond passed for this. I know one. the superintendent was always there at the old one. The, the people in this area are bonded out. We ain't passing no more bonds. We're done with the bonds because we feel like all our bonds went out to Colony, Colony Ridge, and we're done with that. When our kids are overloaded over here, and all of our money's going out there, there's a big problem there. No, I, I hear you. When our kids are running out of FEMA traders and they want to build this big freaking fancy administrative building just to pat themselves on the back, if it's good enough for our kids to run out of these traders, let them work from those traders. Well, and then I got to go here in a second, but it was um, yeah. when they had the fatality accident with the kids. All right, I don't know if it was fatality. Okay, let me explain to you something before that accident even happened. I lived down that way and where do you live for I live in Kirby Wood okay but for uh, a few weeks before that accident even happened all right kids were running out in front of cars to see how close they could get to the front bumper and it was a contest that they were having going across there and it was like I almost hit two or three of them you know driving down to the convenience store and back all right and they would wait until the last thing and they dart out well, at that time of night when that kid was going through there, I don't think he's totally at fault in this. This is where I'm going at. But they raked that poor boy over the coals, all right? Because at that time of night, there's no lights on the high school side, and it's all bright where uh, the pizza place and all that yeah, stuff uh, is. Uh, so you get eye washed here. You can't hardly see down the side of the road right there. And they go darting out. Someone's going to get hit I hadn't heard <coughs> He was just the unfortunate soul that was driving at that particular time, at that moment, and hit those children. See, I got asked to help because they wanted a crosswalk. And a crosswalk only works if you can get the kids to use it. Well, and, and then, or even a ramp above. So then I asked, I was like, well, that's the stupidest I thing. Said, Here, here's the thing you got to tell me. I was like, are there classrooms in the administration building? Like that's truly the only way I the only way we can get that done is if you can show me on the prints where there are classrooms where the kids will have education, educational hours during school hours in that building, then the conversation can be brought up of how do you funnel them to the crosswalk though? If you got one crosswalk across, how do you funnel them to the crosswalk? Well, but this this is it. I mean, the main issue that they were upset about it right there at Little Caesars where they do have the signs now, but I don't think signs do a damn thing. 
So when that and this was this after after school, school they actually wanted the over. But, but this accident happened after school hours yeah, during the volleyball game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, volleyball game. So how do you get them to funnel to the crosswalk instead of just walking across the street? Well, well it's really. kind of like enforcement. I mean, people, people go, go from A to there. B. People go from A to B. They don't sit there and go, oh, well, let's walk down here and go across the crosswalk. You know, it that to me is the most asinine thing. Uh, I, 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 don't think there, there. I, I think that sign only, I, I, only helps point liability if you hit somebody. It doesn't do anything to actually keep the accident from happening. It just says the sign was there and you still hit somebody. All it mm -hmm. did is help assign liability. Yeah. I think it did next to nothing to. And see, all my neighbors felt the same way. But also, I have a neighbor across the street from me. And when we turn out of Kirby, when you take a left, you turn into the turn lane, and he's mm -hmm. over in the traffic, right? If you go right, it's turn only left, and it's double yellow line, right? He was coming out of the driveway. This is how the illegal aliens have affected us also. This lady comes in and hits him in the turn lane. He gets failure to yield. She has no driver's license, no registration, no insurance, and, accident, and the kids are not buckled up in the street. And the accident street. would have never taken place if she were not on the highway where legally she should have never been. But he gets a ticket for failure to yield. She comes back and sues him. The judge tells him to shut up and sit down, and she wins. What court? Here in Cleveland. Who is it? It was... Um, Steely, who's I, I don't know who the judge was at the time, but uh, he lost in court and they told him to shut up. We don't want to hear it, basically. And he's a black guy and he still got rid of it. And here's the problem regardless of how good any law is. If exactly, because in my opinion, if they don't have a driver's license, don't have registration, don't have insurance, don't have tags, then they shouldn't have been on the road in the first place. Any accident they have should be 100% their fault. I have a class A And that's CEO. what we need to have legislation on, is let's make stuff their fault for a change. Let's give the police teeth when they pull over an illegal alien and they ain't got their drive license, they don't got inspection stickers, they got paper plates that was given to them by a corrupt. Yeah, they were cranking the hell out of those here too. Yeah, well. yeah. Why not give the police officers their teeth back in, because they all feel like they just gotta throw up their hands and say, you just can't do it no more. Because these people are just going to be released and, you know, it, it sucks. It's an uphill battle. We ain't winning. But that's the biggest thing right now. I if if any police. officer apprehends somebody and they're here illegal, all they can do is sit there and wait for us to come pick them up and they will never show up. Well, ICE don't do it. I got a friend of mine. He's a sheriff's deputy and he's got ICE friends that tell him we can't handle it. We can't do it. Oh, no. Like I said, they, don't, they won't come pick them up. Yeah, it's horrible. So, I, I man, I, I know you got to get busy and stuff. Uh, well, I covered let's start. all my. Uh, I covered well, no, hey, anytime, give out my number. Uh, hey. Don't hesitate to call. It, it, I, is, I, it, it hurts my feeling. It, not my feelings, but it hurts my heart that we've lost our country. We just hadn't come to terms with it yet. We've lost our state. We hadn't come to terms with it yet. And that, that's sad. I was on correction for four years, corrections committee. When I lost Walker County, I said, you gotta take me off that shit. That's, that whole committee cared only about offender's rights, never victim rights. So I got myself in trouble more than a few times because I don't sit well anyways and have to listen to that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, no, I'm like, way I am. You, I'm going to fight for you the cry, You cry about the conditions here. What did you do to get there? So finally, I, I pissed some of them off. And when, when they were on there testify, I was like, no, I want, I want the records of everything the individuals here. And I was like, here, sexual assault of a minor, this, this, and this. I was like, no, you don't have a right to come cry to me about this. Call me, call me an asshole if you may. But I was like, no, we're not. That's not how we're supposed to work here. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I, 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 really I, I just pray that there's a fix, and uh, I'm tired of nothing being. And I don't want it just to be another law. I don't want it to be a lot of this. I want to see a lot of let's get the ball rolling. And 
let's do an investigation. I, I want a whole hard investigation on so many different levels. Here Let's bother find out who the corrupt people are. Let's prosecute the corrupt people. We just proved with the Paxton trial we don't be good on that. I know, because I had a lady tell me. I, I, what, what I think about the Paxton trial, y'all threw your guns in too quick. Y'all didn't have enough evidence supporting the issue. You well, just in the house we weren't from, supposed to. From what I heard of him was it was all hearsay. And what I heard was, oh, it was our opinion that he might be doing something illegal. It wasn't that they had, okay, here is where the problem is. All right. As, have, you, have you served on grand jury? Mm-hmm. I've served three times. That's 100% what it is. Here's that is presented. Does this deem necessary to follow through with an investigation and go forward with the trial? And mm-hmm. he did. That's what that's that's the, that's the only vote that we took oh, in the house. I understand. But in the point. Senate, and then that's the tough. So the, the Senate really, actually took a vote on day one, mm-hmm. and all but six voted that it's still with as it was presented and as they had. Don't get me wrong. wrong. I'm not mad that it's going through the course that it needed to go through. I'm just upset that it was all based on hearsay instead of factual evidence. There's a lot of stuff that wasn't hearsay. I mean, that's and, 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 and I that, that, but that's what we're told. I know. No, that's the way it's put out. I mean, that's you know. So I've got, and I can only go by what we're told. I can't go by you know private meeting in the back room and stuff like that. And that's what bothers me on the deal. Like I said, it's it did not have. A fair trial when the presiding judge just receives three million dollars from the same individuals that paid for the defense for Paxton. Nobody's talking about that. <coughs> Paxton receives three. I mean, so the Harry Harry governor Jordan. receives three million uh-huh. from the exact same individuals who volunteered to pay for the legal defense for Paxton. In what world would that be considered? Yeah. Right. That that's what I'm getting at. That's what's pissing me off so much is the corruption. Also, you know, if, if and I, normally you would I not see me sit here looking at all. I'm a, a, I'm a super patriot. Okay, I'm a big time patriot. I love my country. I love my fellow man. I take a bullet for you in the heartbeat. But what hurts my heart is everything that we've ever fought for. There's nothing. We pissed it away and said we don't care. It's like there's nothing. There's nothing being done. There's nothing happening. And that hurts my heart to the core. But if you're willing, let me reach out to Bess. Let's try to sit down next week. Any help? Like I said, the problem is if I simply go and I convey what I'm told, it's the same thing. It's I can only convey hearsay. Mm hmm. I mean, and that's like me. All I can do is convey hearsay unless I bring and the, the, and the people problem with me. I think it's still valid enough that if you and I can sit and convey it to get some guidance on them to see how to go forward, and I think he's probably our best shot of being able to. Yeah, that's, that's me. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I really do respect you for coming in. And no, I mean, I, I will make time. I've, I've never been. I'm like take my ass chewings if I got them coming I'll take a little bit if I don't have them coming I don't take them very well yeah but the Paxton thing is I read the 100 page indictment like he told me to and I went back and I looked at it and to me it was and this is just what I'm privy to is it was hearsay and that you know I don't know so I know there's it wasn't good there's always more to it than what we're being told so I mean it's a well, and I told somebody, I mean, week before, I said, listen, good, bad, or different, however this turns out, we need to finish. Cause we have business that we need to tend to. And this is not productive to get this business done. Because this whole thing is putting a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. And if it isn't handled properly, people are going to be calling BS on it. Oh, no. I don't people are going to be, do you think the media is bad now? It's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets Well, and here's, thing. and then i got to leave on this. So, Michael Berry. Uh-huh. Very brought up a lot. He's got my cell number. Mm-hmm. We've texted back and forth. I texted him. I said, Michael, I know you got my cell number. Here it is again. Uh, would like to sit and talk to you. I said, I'm glad to talk either on the record or off. Just let me know. You think I've heard back from him? Mm-hmm. No. 
But I know for a fact he texted Bobby Rader yesterday morning and wants to talk. Well, I saw Bobby at the other day when Leonard had, and we were talking. I said, hey, I heard you got to ride around a little bit. He said, yeah. He said, I got a call that morning. The lieutenant governor is coming. He wanted a police escort, this, this, and this. Why does he get a police escort? He should just suck it up and ride on back there without them. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> but yeah, that, that's the tough thing. I was like, well, so well, I had, I had my office. Right. I was approached by David Wire, right? And I told him, why don't y'all come down here? We'll take a ride through, bring an interpreter with us. We'll go interview people in the colony. So I had a pull back up where I did not respond. Check it. I got hit on that. I never heard of the Daily Wire. Mm -hmm. Honestly, never heard of them. That's and Charlie Kirk and all those guys. And they're from San Diego. The number I have is San Diego, California. Yeah. Or no, Sacramento, California. Well, they just texted it to me. San Cruz or something like that. Well, the number is is uh. It sounds like it's uh, telemarketing. <laughs> <laughs> when they reached out to me, I go, man, this is a telemarketer. So I just hung up on them. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not real. Okay, well, here we go. <coughs> um, San Jose, California. Yeah, San Jose. Like, why the hell do I want to get in, get in the middle of somebody from San Jose, California wants a statement about this? I was like, right. You didn't even know him from Adam. I didn't know him from Adam. I was like, no, I'm not going to jump in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like I said, I reached out. I was like, I'm glad to talk with you. He said, well, we tried to talk to you before. I was like, you got to understand where I'm coming from. I get called. I was like, I get random couple of weeks. That's folks funny wanna, because a couple of weeks ago they called me. And I ignored the call, and he texted me, "Why are you ignoring my call?" I said, "You're a telemarketer, you know." And he goes, "No, I didn't hear it." And he told me who he was, and I was like, "Okay, well, I'll talk to you then." But I thought it was a telemarketer because all the telemarketers come from San Jose, California, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or someplace like that. I said, "All I knew was like, you're in a telemarketer." After you listen to this, I think that it's important for us to see that we need change. Ernest Bales has served four terms and he served long enough. I believe that he is hurting Liberty in San Jacinto County and HD 18. We cannot go on further with Ernest Bales in office. And nothing is going to be done with Colony Ridge as far as them being held accountable. As long as Ernest Bales is in office, this malignant cancer of Colony Ridge is going to continue to grow and fester. And we need change. And we need somebody, a local person who's been following Colony Ridge from its beginning, who is appalled by it and wants to bring accountability and rule of law to Colony Ridge. That's me. Not somebody who lives an hour and a half or so away. We need a local to tackle to this biggest issue in HD18 Colony Ridge, and that's me. And the other thing to, to think about with this is Governor Abbott's involvement with Colony Ridge. According to Wayne Dolcefino, Ernest Bells himself has gone on hunting trips with John and Trey Harris. They've given him hunting trips. He refuses to answer questions about that. And also, uh, what about the governor? I believe that the governor needs to come clean. Is this true, what Ernest Bales is saying, that the governor himself has taken hunting trips with John and Trey Harris? Is this why he's not dealing with Colony Ridge himself, but punting the issue to the Texas state legislature? I believe we should call upon Governor Abbott to return the donations that he received from John and Trey Harris and Colony Ridge. Return those funds and come clean with the voters about him taking these hunting trips. Is Ernest Bell lying? It's possible. He lies about a lot of things. Or did Governor Abbott take these hunting trips? No matter what happens, people of HD18, I call upon you, citizens of Liberty and San Jacinto and Hardin and East Montgomery County, I call upon you to vote for change. Let's vote Ernest Bales 
out of office and let's vote someone in who's going to fight against Colony Ridge. I ran against Bells two years ago. And I campaigned against Colony Ridge and I campaigned for school choice. Janice Holt didn't do either of those two things. And we need somebody very, who's very serious and committed and is willing to help our county and our house district and deal with this peril we face from Colony Ridge and put the interests of our citizens first and hold John and Trey Harris accountable for the damage they've done to our community. We need to force those two men to close up shop and send them packing. And we need to do that now. So that's why I call upon you to vote for change, vote for Dr. Missick, vote for a person who's going to put your needs first, who cares about you, and not put the needs of dirty, corrupt, so-called land developers ahead of you. I want to serve God and country the way I've served God and country for 30 years of military service. And this is an immigration and a border control issue. I was in Colony Ridge recently, and uh, I worked at the border mission for, for four years. And we're seeing border problems not six hours away down in the area I worked. But now we're seeing the same problems. Now we're seeing the same problems and challenges on the border here in our community. And we need to have someone who's going to take a strong stand against this challenge and this threat and put our community first, and that will be me. It's already early voting on Tuesday, February 20th to March 1st. Election day is March 5th. Please get involved. Let's retire Ernest Bales from politics and have someone who's going to fight for our community, me, Stephen Missick, serve you in Austin. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you.